come and this man has it. And if Collingwood fans haven't forgiven him still... We wore the black and white up home and I probably actually uh, bothered uh, Collingwood because it's the only side we saw back home when I was home was sit up at 12 o'clock at night to watch footy at work, sides like Collingwood and Richmond and, uh, and a few other clubs. And uh, So I sort of followed them a bit as a kid and that, but, oh, I think it... Uh, it irks a bit, I suppose, if now that they're a very, uh, very popular club. And uh, but they, hell, they deserved it. They, uh, they've worked hard and uh, they got up there. And they got the premiership. They fully deserved it. Now, who have the Essendon supporters offside? No, that would never happen to TD. But what about losing to Collingwood in that grand final? It's disappointing, eh? Just to have lost the grand final. You know, it's, we. Uh, to me, you'd like to think. Uh, like from a supporter point of view, that you could be able to go out and uh, you know, we're quietly confident that we you know, might have been able to win that game. But uh, there's a lot, a big element of luck in uh, grand finals. I think it's how you you come up with injuries and uh, what sort of a run you've had through the finals and things like that. And uh, to me, Collingwood was just a terrific side. You know, everything could sort of work pretty well right from them. No matter how, how much we threw at them, you know, they were able to come back even stronger and again. So they. They were very committed, whereas we sort of we looked a bit sort of underdone, and and uh, we just couldn't quite get going. No matter how hard you try, even though a lot of you have your you know people come up to you and say, oh, I think you might have you know struggled a bit. You didn't, weren't having a go, but I can assure people that you know like we had a you go out and try, but things don't come your you know come off. Go go your way from time to time. While football is a serious business, and it can be no more serious than grand final time. It also has provided the players and the supporters with a mountain of humorous incidents and many over the years have involved the man with that perennial grin on his face, Terry Danaher. Seeing the Danaher boys, there was Terry, Chris and, uh, and Anthony in uh, Tokyo was uh, quite a funny experience because I, I left them in the underground station one day trying to work out how they, how they were going to get on the bullet train and uh, it was one of the funniest things I've seen for a long time, the, the three Danaher boys from the... Uh, from Hungary trying to work out the, uh, the railway system in Tokyo. But uh, one of the funniest things that I can ever remember Terry doing is um, on a football field. And uh, you know, Terry is such a, uh, a gritty sort of a player. He just sees the ball and he goes for it. And um, one day out at, out at uh, VFL Park and we were playing Carlton. And the game was really tight. It was very close and it was in the last quarter. And uh, the ball was in our forward pocket. And uh, I picked the ball up and I spun around and I, you know, I bought one guy and I was going to have a shot at goal and the bloke tackled me. And I looked down and uh, it was bloody Terry tackled me. <laughs> and he just looked up and he grinned at me and he said, uh, oh, sorry, mate, sorry, mate. I think there's a lot of stories about Terry or the Danahers that um, probably going up to talk to the Danahers about their boys and, you know, we might be able to get the four of them together and Terry's telling me that... Uh, <laughs> You, you know, like you just get in the little plane and you're up there, son, and you'll find this tree. And that, that tree, she's the start of the airstrip next next door. You know, and of course you're flying up there and you cross over the Murray River and you're looking, <laughs> you're looking for this tree up near Angier. And I thought to myself, fantastic, you know, where are we really going to go? What paddock will we land in? And Terry reckons, oh, you can't miss this tree. And really, when you think of it, it's, it's, it's right in the middle of where you want to land sort of thing. And you've got to just miss it and land it safely. And then, of course, when you're going out, you've got to get back over it. He said, I told you to keep an eye on that tree. It's a pretty dangerous tree. You know, you'll, you'll find it. Back in his younger days, he was, uh, he's uh, knocked over a policeman one day, apparently. He'd just come down uh, from the bush and uh, was playing at South Melbourne then, and he was running late for training or something, and uh, training or work, I forget now, and uh, he had to come across some tram tracks, and uh, he, brought, he had an old Cortina then, Ford Cortina, and uh, he uh, was flying down a the road there in South Melbourne, and uh, he... Uh, this uh, policeman, he said, come out of the road from nowhere and uh, put his hand up and uh, he just happened to be on these uh, tram tracks and he's put the brakes on and skidded up and <laughs> skidded over him. <laughs> just knocked him over and he saw this hand come up with a bonnet and uh, the policeman wasn't too happy and uh, that was probably one of the funniest, funniest stories I think I've heard. And typically, the funniest of them all told against himself. Oh, we'd outride it aside. There was a stinking hot day here one day and the, ca uh, the captain didn't want to put the side, we didn't, uh, didn't want to go back in to uh, go for the outright, so it knocked us off early and uh, we'd had a pretty good session. It was about three o'clock, I think we finished, the game finished and uh, we got straight down the pub and had a, quite a good session. Uh, 
pretty sociable mob that was mob we played. <laughs> and, uh, so they went to about 10 and they sort of decided to knock off and then we uh, we just stayed around, a few of us. But uh, you know, peanuts in the bags of chips and that don't go a long way, mate, when you go to about 2 or 3 in the morning. And uh, of course my my ride went and uh, I think Anthony it might have been at the time. He said, come on, I'm going. I said, no, nah, no, wait a, wait a couple more. But uh, he said, a couple more soon went and uh, he said I did go and I said I'll find my own way home. But come the end of the night there's only about two or three of us in the in the pub and they're all going in different directions. I thought, oh well I've never run home before. So uh, it's as good as time as any I guess to how, do it. How far was that? Oh about ten miles I suppose. Ten miles out but uh, I'd never do it again, Eddie. <laughs> no, I was in thongs and and a pair of stubbies and, and gears. It's pretty hard. I thought I'd cut cut across home and went through a couple of stubble paddocks, mate, which are full of straw and uh, cut hell out of the old legs and blisters in between the toes where the thongs were rubbing <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, a, it's just a bit of a battle. Football has opened the world for Terry Danaher, but whether he's playing in Hungary, Tokyo, Ireland, America, London or in Munich, he's the same TD. Well, geez, you know, I thought, you know, we had some good drinkers in Aussie then, but uh, looking around the place over here, it's just, we've got a... You know, it's going to take a hell of a bloody good job to keep up with these these people over here. These Germans, they can drink. It's good brew and that, but uh, we'll stick at it. You know, we don't just don't die. We'll just keep working. And, Practice uh, makes perfect. Practice certainly makes perfect. Terry Danaher's greatness as a player is that he has fitted the Sheedy style of coaching and the game of the 80s and 90s to perfection with his magnificent versatility. Full forward, centre half forward, full back, centre half back and that's only one quarter under Kevin Sheedy. But he can play them all and has seen some of the all-time greats. I suppose like so many other uh, players that uh, seen Bruce Dool play, I guess he's probably one of the you know, the complete footballers that I've seen, you know, and that uh, he's a very good backman and that. And uh, you know, Malcolm Blight, uh, you know, Barry Round for his longevity in the game. And the blokes like Gary Dempsey, Ross Glendinning, and then you sort of get into the uh, Wayne Chimmerbush, all those, Lee Matthews, are all terrific footballers and it's just been proven, you know, for what they've done, you know, and to the game. And uh, then you've got, um, in the modern era, Gary Lyne, Dermot Breaton, and what of the great men he's had by his side? Oh, well, that wouldn't be too hard, really. I think Simon does that, and uh, Simon Madden's been a very good player for the club, and uh, he's got a very big heart, and he's uh, so it's just been terrific, you know, at the club. He's had his up share, fair share of ups and downs and injuries, but, uh, you know, they've gone on and played 350-odd games. He's, he's been just terrific, a great clubman. You know, ask Simon to do anything, do us 
a couple of times he's helped me out in sportsman's nights and things like that. Like, uh, he's uh, just a terrific bloke to have around, you know. He gets on very well with everyone and, uh, and the main thing is out in the field, you know, he's just got a big heart, he just keeps going and uh, he's just been terrific. But just as Terry Danaher recognises the genius in his opponents, there is no shortage of opponents willing to pay their respects to the famous Essendon number five. Terrific courage, uh, stamina, run all day, great mark, great kick, can play either end of the field, very versatile, just an all-round complete great footballer. One of nature's gentlemen, uh, old TD, he's a, he's a great character. Um, he's been a fantastic player for years. I mean, he, he's a player you can call a champion because every year he's always up there. And um, if a club could have, say, 20 TDs, you win the grand final every year. And when paying tributes, how can you forget the Danaher heritage? Oh, Mum's done a remarkable job, really, in, in bringing us all up. We're all, I can't speak for the other kids because I was the younger ones, but we were a bit the Tigers and that, you know, like matching up, having uh, the four boys were the eldest at the time and we were you know, pretty wild and woolly. And she done a pretty good job to uh, get us all organised and. Uh, You'd be up there at night, late at night, washing our gear because you'd only have one, maybe two uniforms and to make sure everything was right because we're dirty and we stay. And uh, you'd be up first thing, you know, like uh, get us up so that we go down and collect the firewood and get the cow's milk before brekkie and things like that. But, uh, you know, she'd done a, she's done a real good job and uh, we've always had plenty of tucker, mate. Don't worry about that. We've worked hard, just like any, uh, all the country folk up there that... Uh, They've had to do it pretty hard, you know. They've learnt from their fathers and that there. They've cleared all the country and that up there, so it was just in the blood. And uh, like you, if you didn't, uh, it's been a few times I uh, decided to keep the footy a bit longer. Didn't worry about bringing the kindling and the wood in, mate. But I did. I got in the strife next morning over it. So I man soon uh, pull you into line and uh, straighten you out. Terry Danaher is as unaffected as he has been successful. To be in senior AFL football for over 15 years says it all for his skill, dedication, endurance and love of the game. And after all that time, the first thing that springs to mind when you think Terry Danaher is, yeah, what a great bloke. So Terry Danaher walks away with a truly great career. He's, uh, he's a guy that um, he could have walked out of the Whitfields in uh, Hungary yesterday, really. He hasn't changed at all. They're all very similar. Uh, and uh, you know, they've all got, they've all got uh, great character and they all work hard, they all train hard and they all play the game really hard but they also enjoy the game and uh, you know, they all call the rooms the sheds and it, it's, it, it is, it's a really sobering thing because you do see a lot of uh, you know, smart answers sort of pass through football clubs and uh, the, the, the Terry and, and, and Chris and Anthony and Neil have all just been good good sorts of blokes and uh, I think that's, that's uh, they've never changed, the, the situation's never changed and especially Terry, he's been living in the city probably half his life now, yet uh, he'd still be just as comfortable and at ease back on the farm in Hungary. He's a bushy in a bushy heart and just an honest person and uh, I don't think he'll ever change, he'll ever change. So what is it that inspires this dedicated, fun-loving man? I guess it's, uh, you know, for any young bloke, if you've got got a bit of ability and you're prepared to work at it, you know, these other doors open for you, you know, as well as, geez, you meet so many different people and and, uh, and you make so many friends out of it, you know, it's all worthwhile and uh, for me, just playing like in the Garlic Series in 84 over in Ireland, we were away for a month and that was great, you know, getting away with players from uh, their respective clubs and that, you, you team together, you know, for a month away, that was, they're just great trips where you go away and you can play football and that. And, and as with those Foster Cup matches, Challenge matches overseas, they've all been, they've been a terrific experience. And uh, again, it's just another one, mate, a little mark there, something that you can look back on you know, later on in life to think that you've done all that. You know, I've got a lot of uh, success, I suppose, but uh, at the same time, I've had, had times where things haven't gone your way. You get a bit of both. And, uh, it's been a bit of an education in some ways, just on life and the way you've sort of got to go about things. And you're not going to get anywhere if you don't uh, put in and work at whatever you're doing. And, uh, so it's been good in that regard. And, uh, but I'll, I'll always be involved in football, even after playing at AFL level, I think. But, uh, 
I'm only hopeful that the young bloke might, if I can encourage him, not push him too hard, but if he's, he's keen and wants to get into football, well, I've got to obviously give him a bit of time, and as with the, the other youngest one coming up. So I think I'll be involved in footy for a fair while longer yet, I think. Down. And I'll play, obviously, as long as I can and maybe take a look at coaching, but that's uh, hopefully a little bit further down the track. When, as invariably people do, they sit down to list the great captains of the game, the champions renowned for the courage and commitment, the men who were a coach's dream by being able to play in any position on the ground, and the player you'd love to meet for a beer and a yarn, Terry Danaher's name will be on every person's list. In a hurry, Danaher. This time he's got merit to beat. And Danaher, great play by the captain.